With the release of Procreate 5.2, we now have an amazing new way to texture our 3D models. We're one step closer to having a complete 3D workflow on the iPad. We're not there yet, but the ability to texture a model, especially with uh, Procreate's awesome tools, is an important step towards that. For 3D artists, the whole workflow is similar to the one used in desktop apps, so even though there are some pitfalls here and there, things are relatively easy to figure out. Of course, not everyone is familiar with 3D and this was the original idea behind this video, to provide a short and easy to follow workflow that will allow anyone to start experimenting with 3D and texturing. In the process though, I realized how difficult this would be, and that's mainly because there's no easy way to get from point A to point B. The 3D apps on the iPad are missing quite a few important features to make this process as smooth as possible. So, the focus of this video has shifted a little bit. Of course, we will go through the steps needed in order to bring a model into Procreate and successfully texture it in 4K, but in the process we will also document some things you should be aware of when working with a 3D on the iPad. So, let's get started. If you're not limited to just an iPad and you have access to desktop 3D applications, things will be much easier. Using the iPad alone will be a bit more of a challenge. To model a 3D object on the iPad, we have three options, Shaper 3D, Nomad, and Forger. There are other apps, but these are the best ones so far. Shaper 3D is best for hard surface models, like tables, chairs, and headphones. Nomad and Forger are best for organic modeling, like head sculpts, cloth modeling, things like that. Modeling though is only one part of the equation. To be able to bring our model into Procreate, we need to figure out two more things. The first one is exporting in a format that Procreate understands, and the second one is figuring out a way to produce UVs for our model. Without UVs, we won't be able to open up our object in Procreate. The iPad apps, Nomad and Shaper 3D, don't produce any usable UVs for their objects, so we either have to use a desktop app to create the UVs, or if we're limited only to an iPad, we have to go through Forger. For now, let's pick OBJ as the export format, but we'll come back to file formats in a little bit. Once we import the object into Forger, we'll get this pop-up asking us to pick a context. Tap on Sculpting. You can already tell we have some issues with the scale, rotation, and shading, but let's ignore them for now. Generate automatic UVs is the command we need in order to produce UVs. Forger automatically creates them and we don't have to do any manual work. Auto-generated UVs have their benefits, but they also have some limitations. They are good only if we're painting our texture onto the 3D model. The moment we decide to edit that texture on a 2D view, like in Procreate's 2D view or in Photoshop, things will get very complicated. And that's because auto-UVs don't prioritize readability. As you can see, a single area of an object is scattered throughout the UV map. So making color adjustments or any other edits is going to be not only tricky, but just plain impossible. But for starting out, auto-generated UVs are perfectly fine. So now that we have our UVs, we can export the model to Procreate so we can start drawing. Let's pick OBJ for now. With our file saved, we can import it into Procreate. We have a couple of issues to solve. The first one has to do with the orientation of our model. It's flipped to its side. While this is easily fixed inside Procreate by rotating the object, it's better to just deal with it before importing. The second issue has to do with the shading of our model. As you can see, the entrance here has some visual jaggies. And finally, the last issue has to do with the fact that texture drawing is limited to 2K. The good news is that we can solve all of these problems. <laughs> the bad news though is that this is the end of the line if you're an iPad only user. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, this is as far as we can go with uh, 3D apps on the iPad. All of the issues we're having are ridiculously easy to fix, it's just that we're missing the necessary tools to do that. The orientation issue has to do with the file format and the fact that each application is using its own orientation axis. The wrong size of the skyscraper also has to do with the file format and the fact that we don't have any way to adjust settings on import. The visual jaggies on the entrance of the model is something that Forger introduces and we cannot fix that because we cannot adjust the font shading. And finally, the 2K texture has to do with Procreate defaulting to that resolution when there's no 4K material coming along with the object. Here's how easy it is to fix these things if we have an app that allows for more control. 
Here I'm using Cinema 4D, but any desktop 3D application will do. As you can see, the import dialog allows us to adjust all the settings we couldn't adjust with the iPad apps. We can change the scale, the phone angle, and also swap the axes in order to accommodate the different axis system used in Shaper. The model is now 35.8 centimeters tall, exactly how it was in Shaper. It also has the correct orientation, and there are no visual jaggies. So if I now run Cinema's Auto UV command and import that into Procreate, most of our issues are solved. The model has the right size, the right orientation, and there's no visual strangeness. The only thing left to solve is the 2K resolution. The only solution to the 4K texture painting is to use USDZ when exporting the model. Before we go into that process, let's talk a little bit about OBJ and USDZ. OBJ is quite an old file format. Back in the 90s, it helped 3D workflows immensely because people were not stuck anymore on one 3D application. They could easily move back and forth between applications without much hassle. But OBJ unfortunately allows for a lot of vagueness. You need to know beforehand the application used in the building process in order to dial in the correct settings for scale and rotation, which is not always possible, especially if you download an object from the internet. The other issue with OBJ is material importing. Throughout all these years, I never really managed to successfully import a material 100% correctly. I always have to do some adjustments in order to match the original object. And this is definitely the case with Procreate. I tried a gazillion different settings to force Procreate to load textures when importing OBJs, but no matter what, I did not succeed. So this is where USDZ comes in. It's a much more modern file format that solves all of OBJ's inherent problems. There's no vagueness in scale, orientation, or material import. All we need to do to successfully import our model is encapsulated in the file format. Apple and Pixar created this file type to serve Apple's AR needs. It's essentially a zipped USDA or USDC file with all the textures contained into the zip. We can easily pick into the format's components by renaming the file to .zip and unzipping it. USDZ doesn't allow for OBJ's vagueness, which in turn ensures that the object and its materials will be read exactly the same way in all apps, which is exactly what we want. But <laughs> there's always a but. Not a whole lot of programs can export to USDZ. And I'm talking specifically about desktop apps. If you're on the iPad, all apps export to USDZ because it's Apple's format and it's included with the OS. But that doesn't mean there are no issues with the USDZ and the iPad. Let me show you what I mean. We can export our Shaper 3D object to USDZ, but when it comes time to import that into Forger to create the UVs, we cannot load the object. Forger cannot read USDZ files. It can export them, but not load them. Nomad, on the other hand, looks like it allows us to load USDZ files, but when we try to do that, nothing happens. So, once more, we've hit a wall with the iPad apps and we have to rely on desktop apps to move further. The situation for the desktop apps is slightly different. USDZ is not as widespread as on the iPad. There are solutions to import and export USDZ files, but depending on your OS or the application of your choice, you might not have this ability by default. There are GitHub applications that allow you to export in USDZ, <laughs> but good luck setting those up. Apple also has a great little tool that allows you to load a model and its textures and spit out a USDZ model. It works absolutely great, but you need a developer account for that. Blender has a plugin that allows for USDZ export, but it's a little bit limited in its functionality, so it's a bit of a toss up. Luckily, Cinema 4D can import and export USDZ files, even though it's not immediately obvious. As you can see, the menu item gives us no indication that we can export in USDZ. But if we select the USD format, there is an option to create a USDZ file. Why this is not indicated on the menu item, I don't know, but I'm glad that we at least have the ability to do that. And this is the point where we hit the next gotcha moment. If the object has a regular material, it won't export that at all. So if we export and preview the file, there's no texture along with the model. But if we create a nodal material with all the necessary textures, that will carry through to the final USDZ file. And that's how we enable 4K editing in Procreate. I've probably completely lost you by now, but let me recap just to get you back to speed. 
If you have to choose between OBJ or USDZ, pick USDZ. This ensures that the model will be read exactly the same way in all apps and most importantly, it will allow you to encapsulate a 4K texture into your model. Unfortunately, we have to use a desktop app for that because Forger, the iPad app we need for UV uh, creation, doesn't load USDZ files. The whole process might look more complicated than it actually is. If you go through the workflow once, it'll be super obvious and you'll be importing and exporting objects in no time. For me as a Cinema 4D user and a 3D artist that uses both an iPad and a desktop, the workflow is not a big deal. I can go back and forth between the iPad and the desktop and all the different apps without any issues. But for users not familiar with 3D, it's obvious that this whole workflow needs some improvement. Unfortunately, it looks like none of the 3D apps on the iPad have really tried to address a crosstalk workflow. They all live in their own little universe doing their own little thing, and if the user wants to take advantage of their unique abilities, it's up to them to figure out how to get in and out of them. I understand that 3D is quite a niche field, but some of these issues are relatively easy to fix, and they should be a priority if these 3D apps want a bigger user adoption. On the bright side, we're slowly getting there. It's going to take some time, but I think in the end we will be able to do some amazing things with our iPads. For example, let's take the AR previewing available on the OS level. This is just a great way to preview our models. Look at how stable the tracking is. We can even move the camera around, and when we come back, the model will be there. That is something we couldn't do before. We can also very easily upload our models to Sketchfab, right from the iPad. We can even sell the models we created and textured on the iPad. These are the things that get me excited about the future. Yes, the 3D workflow on the iPad is kind of broken right now, but all of these things can easily be fixed, so I'm staying optimistic. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video. I hope you at least now have a better understanding on how to import a model into Procreate. Let me know if something was uh, unclear and I'll try to answer any of your questions in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.